What up? This is your boy Doughboy, and this is another installment of the Dobriety Files. Now, if you are wondering why there is a split screen and who is this beautiful young lady on the left of me or right of me, depending on how you're looking at this, this is one of my really, really true good friends. I have known her, I think about seven, eight years now. Uh, we go way back. We worked on a while and out together, collaborated other times, but she's really, really, truly a dope person and one of my favorite people in the world. Welcoming to the stage, Shante Williams. Shante, Williams. hey, what up, bro? <laughs> We finally here. We have been trying to get on the books for this for like the past two months, and we're both really busy. I know, I, which is a great thing. Which is a great thing. That's that's a part of what happens when when we uh you know take control of our lives and stop drinking. Yes. So yes, <laughs> this year has been really really wild, and I want us to just kind of have a dope conversation. You know, based because on sobriety files here, what I like to do is just focus on you know, living a sober life, you know what I'm saying? Like, like since you and I met, you know, something that both of us have been dealing with. So what I wanted to talk to you about was a couple things. Um, but before we get to the big thing, I want to just know how tough was 2020 on you as far as sobriety and was 2020, is that when you had the relapse? No. So 20, 2019 is when I had the relapse. Okay. And, so we'll, hey, we'll, we'll talk about the relapse. Okay, in a second. Okay, okay. But so, 2020, walk me through 2020 and sobriety. So 2020 was crazy because we got locked down. I was getting, you know, messed up every day. I was drinking every day, uh, multiple times a day. I mean, my, my shit was just going by. And the crazy thing is I, I was getting to a place where my body just wasn't feeling liquor anymore. And if you're an addict out there, you know that uh, you could be in so much pain, your liver could be out of your stomach. And if you could just try to fit one more shot and you would, and I was, I was at that point, I was like bleeding out my nose, my organs were swelling up. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the, the pros and I'm, I'm just going to say the pros for what was happening in the news. Okay. How, how our community, how black people was just dying left and right. And it was showing it and things was getting so crazy. Um, I was able to look at it and go, damn, like people are dying <sighs> and, and don't, and don't want to die. And I was right. sitting there killing myself and, and re not realizing how ungrateful I was to be able to be living mm. no matter what I was going through. That was a huge, that was a huge realization for me, as well as my grandma passing, who's like the mayarchy for, you know, our whole family. Right. And condolences, uh, condolences yeah. to your family. Yeah, no, uh, thank you. But the the day be, the day before her funeral, my niece was born. And my that's our first immediate uh, you know, kid okay. for my brother, you know, for my mom to have. So at a point I was like, neither one of us gonna have kids. My mom, you know, so mm -hmm. my niece was born the day before, and I just felt like I owe her my life. Oh wow. That is so dope, man. Yeah. How, how she how's she doing, man? She doing good. So she she's <laughs> She I have no her. idea what my brother has the happiest baby, but she, Man. she like if I could say she literally just took my grandma's soul Ooh. and embodied that she she is everything. Every smiles. I mean, just she's a joy. She's a joy. Man, they grow so fast, man. My daughter, Kiara, as she's she's 15 now. And it just that the like I remember seeing her for the first time in an ultrasound. And so now to. She's she's driving a motor vehicle, so I trust yeah. me, you're gonna have so many dope experiences with her. I'm so happy for Auntie Shante. No, we we sad right now about it, but she she's such a joy. My brother would call me every day. Mm -hmm. Um, with her, well, he would Facetime me with her, and it, wow. it was my reminder to not pick up that day. Wow. So it's, okay. Yeah. So now that brings me to the second topic that I want to talk to you about because this is is such a um such a big topic whenever you're dealing with with staying sober and living a sober life, but it's relapse. So, yeah. you know, you know, my whole story, and I'm pretty sure you know, but I'll just, you know, repeat it. To, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so just yeah. to like, you know, let everybody out there know. So my drinking career basically started when, you know, in my thirties, but it kind of hit a crescendo when I was about 35. Um, I had weight loss surgery, became like a transfer of addiction. And then I ended up going to, um, to rehab the first time in May, 2017, 
went for a couple of weeks. It got raided by the FBI. It was a whole thing. So I came out thinking, God, that's what they were I, selling I, drugs in there. No, there was like it was like some fake like insurance stuff. They was basically going out like signing people up like off of the street and then getting like insurance policies without these people knowing. It was like a whole ordeal. Wow. And so I wow. came out. And like, I was in there the whole time, like doubting the system, thinking I didn't really have a problem, judging everybody I was in there with, like, these guys got a problem. I just like to drink when I come home. Right. And so then I came out and it started right back to drinking. And it got really bad for me in November, 2017. Like I almost lost the job that I was at. I was just fucking up in life all the way around. So then I go to, to rehab November 22nd, 2017. I complete 30 days and I had made it all the way up until June 17th of last year. And that is when I lost 939 days of sobriety. So I wanna walk you through what I went through and then I wanna hear your relapse story because I think they're very interesting to tell. So Absolutely. first with me, this was my first real big relapse off of having a big amount of time, like losing that many, like I almost had three years in the can and, um. It was just right around, it was last year and so much other stuff was happening. Like in 2020, it was just, I, I don't know. I think being stuck in the house did something to me that I wasn't prepared for it to happen. Like, I think the, the whole time, maybe I was just working and staying busy. Maybe I didn't notice things that were going on in my mental health and I had to address them when, you know, this happened. So I remember I was trying to stay sober. So you know, like, I don't know, like, did you ever have the thing where like, you had like a, a list of people that you would call if you were gonna have a drink that you would call to not relapse? Yeah, I actually had people to call while I was relapsing. Wow, so you so you, so you, you had levels of people that you could call like when these things happen, right? Yeah. So in the time, for whatever reason, everyone that's on the list, nobody's answering the phone. Now this is around, April, May-ish of last year. And I was going through a lot of stuff. Me and my girl had broken up at the time. And I, I started seeing myself acting different, but I didn't really understand what was going on. Like, I remember I would do this thing where I was just pacing around the house, like walking back and forth. And I didn't know why. And then I remember one day I didn't leave the house. And then I was walking around the house. I looked down at my Fitbit, 26,000 steps, hadn't left the house at all. So I was like, something must be wrong. So then my friends were getting real concerned about me. They were like, yo, let me check you into a psych ward, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I go in, they're like, you're bipolar. You're gonna need to take medicine for the rest of your life, X, Y, Z. So then I'm just really scared. So when I come out, mind you, they're like, we wanna put you on medicine, da, 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 da. At this point, I'm really tripping. I don't know if you knew this, but this was the time that I got this tattoo where I got Whitney Houston on my arm ah. and I got my sobriety date, 11-22-2017. And I got a picture of Whitney Houston to remind me to not let my demons, you know, kind of consume me. Cause you know, she, that this happened. So I remember wow. just tripping. And so now I'm taking you back like to the month before I relapsed. Cause you know, they say that the moment you take the drink when you relapse, you relapsed a long time ago, yeah, yeah. basically. So now I remember, so I remember I was staying up late. I was scared as hell. Like, oh my God, I'm bipolar. Everyone's gonna find out. People are gonna think I'm not cool. Like. I was just embarrassed. I just yeah. was under a lot of stress. And then I remember just constantly thinking about drinking. I remember just every day I would just be like, man, I, I want to drink. I want to drink. And then I was like, maybe I can drink like regular people. Cause that was something that always hung over my shoulder. Like I kind of, ever since I had gotten out of rehab in 2017, I remember being like, can I drink? Like I used to almost envy people that could drink on the weekends and right, be like, right. can I do it? And you know, and so time is going by and like, it was a lot of personal sh like trauma going on at this time. Like, you know, I was, I was falling out with friends and family and just, it was just a lot going on. So then I remember back to like the week before it happened, I just, it was almost like I was just waiting for the day that it was going to happen. Like I just, I was dealing with so much stress. It was times in this, I was becoming suicidal. I was just like, I, I cannot deal with this anymore. And I didn't have or release. So in my mind, I was just like, my kill switch is going to be, if this becomes too much, I'm simply going to do it. And so I think I kind of made my mind up like a week before. So then the final straw for me, I just remember I was having a conversation with somebody and I just remember the conversation was not going where I needed it to go. I was just like, this conversation is very, very upsetting to me. And it was like, I just, 
I kind of hit a, a button and I remember hanging up the phone and literally thinking I was on the balcony of my house. I literally remember thinking either you're going to hurt yourself or you're going to drink. You need to make a decision. Now, I know that that sounds really dark, but these are the two decisions I'm faced with in that moment. So I'm just like, I, I'm drinking. And I literally remember like I had one of my one of my people's at my crib. I was just like, hey, man, I'm about to you know go to bed. So they end up leaving. And I remember driving to the store right up the street from my house. Now, mind you, I hadn't been to this store, but this used to be my home liquor store. Right. And I used right. to go in there from time to time over that 939 days. And he would see me, but I would never get liquor because I wasn't drinking. And I swear when I went in there and I asked for it, he almost just looked at me like, nah, like you could just tell there was a moment like he didn't even want to sell it to me. <laughs> Right, right. And then he's just looking at me and then he's just like, you could tell it kind of hit him and he just, he puts it in a bag. It was like, I got a fifth of Henny. And I remember him putting it in a bag and then he's just, I was like, thanks, man. And he just looked at me like, and this is a liquor store. So he makes his money, but right. he knew, he knew. And I remember driving back home and I remember just looking at it in my seat and I'm just like, this is, this is, this is about to happen. I remember driving into my driveway, walking upstairs and something in my head was like, nigga, you don't have to. Right. Oh yeah, I do. Oh yeah. Right. I was almost like, it, it's almost like somebody else was driving the car and I was in the right. seat of my life. I was just like, it was like, no. And I just remember coming in the house, sitting down, opening it, cracking it. And then it happened. And I, I, I still to this day, run this and then it was like it took me literally in the the rest of the year to get sober like i was a mess all of the rest of 2020 I was showing up to places drunk saying and doing all the dumb shit i thought i was had behind me feeling because i had made it public you know about this when you make it yeah. public and then you get people here and like they hit you like are you you drink yeah, it. It's, so, <laughs> it's, it's embarrassed. I feel like I had let all these people down. There were people saying negative things about me. Like, I, like, cause I think sometimes we forget that our, our visibility to the general public is higher than it was back then. I had a lady make a video about me saying dope boy is an alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it got like thousands of views and I had to watch this. Like, and so I remember it just taking me in such a dark place. And I, I I still see the loop every day of when I could have stopped, what I could have did differently. And it just, it loses me. But that was my my ascension back into it. And it it, it fucked me up in a, in a lot of ways, but it taught me a lot about how to not let it happen again. So take me back to, so I know you kept it cool 2020, but take me back to 2019. I want to know how much, how many days of sobriety you lost. And just give me like the, maybe, the weeks and days leading up to what, uh, changed, what changed from sober Shantae to drinking Shantae the day that it happened. So first of all, is the audio still good? Audio is perfect. Okay. Cause I'm like, I, I hear <laughs> stuff now. I hate, I hate I, that. Cause this is so good. Yes, it is. It's so good. Uh, Side so, note, I, I, I want to tell you why you're up and I, I just want to give you this compliment. I know that you probably get this compliment cause I get it a lot sometimes too. Your skin looks so amazing. Your uh, eyes are glowing. You look so, so healthy. No, <laughs> you look so healthy, nah, yo. Thank you. You, you, know how, you know how thank you. You oh, know I how know. we it in our face when we drinking. So. I, was, I was looking 65 when I was <laughs> way younger. Um, so take you, me back. Take me back yeah. to, that, to how it happened. So so first of all, this is not my first go round of sobriety. Um, this is my fourth time. And each time it, it, it became different. Uh, this time I relapsed in 2019. I was, um, I, I remember <laughs> this was the time when I stopped touring with my family. Okay. Uh, I was getting really beside myself and, and I understand what you were saying about like feeling that feeling of like, you know, some, something ain't right. I don't know if I was getting cocky with it mm -hmm. or whatever it was, but I was, I was feeling very, um, I have to prove myself. I was feeling very like I'm tired of touring and having to hear people say that, you know, I, I, I only got stuff because of my family. Right. So now I'm trying to get away from my family so I could try to do things on my own. I had a play kickoff after I left them. I did this dope play. <clears throat> and then I also had a breakup in a relationship. Mm. So I moved in with myself. I was really good. But mind you, I was touring with my uncles. 
they they would get you know bottles and some mm-hmm. of the bottles they wouldn't take so i would take those bottles and i would put them in my cabinet i was doing this for the whole two and a half wait, years wait oh, wait 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 stop yeah stop. Wait. you were wait you were you were living a sober life i was living a sober life and you were bringing bottles into the house yeah so so here here's i'm very in my mental right mm-hmm. I was at a place where, you know, I was meditating. I was very in tune with myself. I had a a certain ritual and I I remained putting myself in places that was making me happy. Mm. So as I was doing that, it it was, I wasn't even thinking about it. You know what I mean? Because it's almost like, it's one of those things where you know how you can't go back to a drink because you got so sick off of it that right. even the smell of it is like, Hoo. so right. I wasn't opening these bottles or nothing. I just would have them because I started doing like get togethers and stuff like that. So that was just free liquor to have, you know what right. I mean? All of my cabinet, didn't touch it, didn't even look at it. It was just in my cabinet. Right. And so I got the call. I got the deal in January with okay. Tiffany and stuff, right? To do okay. my Netflix special. Mm-hmm. Um, and around that time i remember i didn't have my girl i got this deal i got a manager and an agent who i couldn't stand Mm -hmm. uh they was you know digging in my pockets and they didn't do anything and so i wind up one day i went in the crib and i looked at the drink and i was like let me just i'm happy you know what i'm saying i just got this deal like it was one of those things and i was thinking about it for a few days but i felt so happy that and i was you were like by yourself you're living alone at I was, yeah i was living by myself i had a studio apartment but it was dope you could see the view i, I mean i was i was i was happy right and so i literally was like i'm so happy i wonder if i can do this again um and so how many days did you i didn't mean to, i'm sorry for cutting you off i was, I, I I was to, over like two and a half years two and a half years two and a half years yeah. and so i went in the cabinet and it was it was patron um and i i i, I so I, I i remember taking the bottle out and i poured me a shot and i took a sip and i got sleepy and i go oh this shit ain't for me no more so I didn't drink the rest of that night. I didn't drink for another two, three days by myself again, having a shorty come through. I said, let me let me have another taste. And so my buildup was me trying to do a little bit more than I did last time because I wasn't feeling it the same. I wasn't hyped. I was nothing. I was just like, yo, this shit is making me tired. I can't even party the same. So I was like, I'm not going to get hooked like this. And eventually, like within that week, I was back at it. I was going, you know, hitting hitting up the different liquor stores. So they didn't think he was an alcoholic. But you, you know, when you in your in your slush at a certain point, you don't even realize you hitting up the same, you know, store and stuff like that. Wait, so So, you went zero to a hundred that quick? I went zero to a hundred. I mean, my my tolerance level was I was I was at least able to not drink throughout the whole day until that tolerance kicked back up. And so it only took a it only took a week. It was like maybe two weeks, two weeks of me going back and forth to the store. Like I was trying to pace myself with going, I'm gonna go get three shots and then I'm gonna just chill in the house. I'll be too tired to walk back out. But then on you know the second, third, I, I drink all those true. walking back home. So Ooh. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, damn, I ain't got shit to take home. So I gotta go back. You know what I'm saying? So I was playing that whole field i stopped meditating i stopped doing all the things that made me happy i was just like i'm happy i'm doing this i'm getting ready for my special and as i was getting ready for the special like i'm working on my set even though they didn't really give us a lot of shows to work out the material Mm -hmm. everywhere i was going i was drinking you know i was i was able to walk go ahead so was your performance at all affected like were you like were you back to you know back to just ripping the stages Did did the alcohol have any effect on, on your performing at that time? Yeah, so so the thing that works for me and what's been in my life and how the universe and my angels work for me, mm-hmm. when I start drinking and I start going hard, everything kind of, it's like I get smacked in the face again. Like, what are you doing? You got your special, you doing this. We gonna make you get through it, but I'm gonna give you another DUI. I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a make, you know, I, I got into one of the comedy clubs out here and I, I was doing really well. They was, I was doing the bells and, you know, I was in the crowd. I was family put me on a wall and everything. And then I got on stage drunk and couldn't remember my jokes. So I got banned from that club for a while. Um, then I went to another club and this is like the day before I'm about to shoot the special. 
And so I think it, no, me knowing I felt like I could have did better energy wise and I, I would have been outside of my head. But I think I still did. You know, I think I did good. But in my head, I was like, I know that wasn't fully me. I was sh I was shitting on myself backstage because I went out the night before and I was so faded. I didn't know network was there. Wanda was there. My manager was there. I didn't know none of this. And I got on stage and I was at D-Ray's night. Uh -huh. And, you, you know, usually D-Ray tear you one an asshole <laughs> if he wants to. But I look so um, I look so much in pain that he just like he told me to get off. You know what I'm saying? He was he was like, come here, come he here. He's a good nigga, man. He, he is a good, good dude. Nigga. Um, and, and I remember him. Um, I remember him like, yo, Tay, and, and I remember Wanda holding her arms out like, you know, come off stage. So I got off stage and I, I, I just don't remember what happened. I didn't even know all those people were there. And I remember um, everybody was doubting. Every, everybody thought I wasn't going to make it. They was like, yo, what are we doing? Like, is she going to show up? And in the day, in that day of my special, I remember one of my good friends coming over mm -hmm. and I was crying. I was crying. I was like, I don't know if I want this. I, I feel suicidal. Um, you know, I this is just very crazy for me. And I was really in my head. And she was like, yo, let's just go. You got this. You've been working on this the whole time. And I went. And as much as I was outside of myself, I still did, you know, I still did my job. Mm. Um, and then and then from that, it was it was a ripple of having to deal with court. I had to go to jail. I had to, you know, there was a lot of things that I had to have done. Um and in the midst of things, like I said, I get a smack in my face, but my smack in the face is like, you're going to get in a car accident, you're going to go to jail, but you still get your license, you still got to go through the program, but we're not going to take everything away from you. So yeah. that became a reminder. Now I'm taking a train and the bus again and, you know, working all those things out. And, and I, I was just drinking and messing up. I was showing up places faded. I was on Breakfast Club. I was doing all these things, but I was chunky. I remember doing this black, um, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, known black uh, media thing. And they, those people tore me apart. And that, that hurt me so much because like even the thumbnails, they had me, I just looked a mess and nobody told me like, yo man, maybe we shouldn't shoot today or nothing like that. I just looked messed up. And then to see the comments, especially from, you know, your people, right. you like they like coming at me hard in these comments. So all those things, was was part of my relapse and just losing losing a lot of stuff but it all came back when i decided to change my life man that's so and thank you for sharing man because yeah. I, I like i feel you in so many play like so many places man like i remember back when we did wilding out years ago and this wasn't even when i was looking at alcohol as a problem like i hadn't had weight loss <laughs> surgery yet nothing and i remember thinking and it was the night before what <laughs> One of the workshops we're supposed to be <laughs> super ready and i'm this is at the time my biggest thing ever i had never right. been on television but i like that's why like alcohol is so deceptive because i remember we right. was hanging out we was like and we was walking back to the hotel we was about to go and then we bumped into someone we knew we was like let's just go have one shot <laughs> <laughs> and they kept buying shots and i remember being so hung over the next right, day right and then just even asking myself then like what are you doing this is the biggest opportunity in your life and you're hung over and you know what i'm saying and you could be changing your life and i've i have so many times where i'm like i the, the stakes will be so high and then self-sabotage starts to come and i don't really know where that comes from. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, right. I don't know if it's like survivor's guilt or if I don't feel like I deserve the blessings. And like, I really relate to a lot of what you're saying about, you know, like God in the universe, like kind of breaking everything down, but not yeah. taking everything from you. I feel like yeah. I went through that a lot last yeah. year because when I stopped, like when I started drinking, sis, it was like, everybody knew I was like right. going on live <laughs> drug, throwing my bipolar medicine. Like I'm tripping. Like, and right. then you know, this industry, you know, word travels fast. And like, I had kind of championed myself so much on the, I'm sober, I'm this, I'm that. And then when I fell off of that, it was just like, I don't want to say like people were waiting for it to happen, but it was like, Oh, look, there he goes. He's doing right, that, right, right. that shit again, man. And, and so let me ask you this. What was it that made you like to just totally decide like 
this is it. And I know you had alluded to that before. So it was the birth of your niece. You had a passing of your the birth of my niece and, and uh, seeing like when I tell you my body was deteriorating, I could have been dead any minute. And, and the fact that I would wake up, I was waking up with, you know, I would throw up in my sleep on my back. I was doing and that. so when you realize that it's not your time to go, there's a purpose. And I'm very open about my life and stuff like that. I, I've I've played this cycle before of losing friends and then trying to get back them back. And at the time, like I had people, you know, taking pictures of me drunk, talking stuff about me drunk. And and I even though I know it's a part, what bothers me so much is we talk about this industry and we talk about certain things. But there's a lot of people in this industry that do way worse than what we probably did. The oh. difference is. They probably had more fame at that time. So people were in their behinds mm -hmm. or they were just more likable to whoever was around them. Exactly. And if you're likable and somebody wants you to win, they're going to, hey, man, I want to make sure you're good. Like, oh, or he's just drinking. He having a good time. So you can meet somebody that's more annoying than you or doing way worse stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's OK, because they are them. Exactly. And then, when, you know what I mean? So those are the things that would bother me it was never about like. You know, oh, I, it's just me. It's like, no, every, people was on walling out with bottles. You know what I'm saying? They was they was getting messed up. And there was things that was said that was, uh -huh. you know, far out there. But nobody can see them because we were, you know, in people's face. And we exactly. were just starting off and we were trying to get there. But there was partying all the oh, time. No, and a me. lot of places I went. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I'm, you know, Russell Simmons, one of that's one of my great, like one of my best friends. And he's right. told me so many stories because, you know, he ran Dev Jam back in the day. Right. He told me so many stories of like damage control that they used to have to do with like artists, like destroying yeah. hotel. Like, so it's not anything new. So it's, it's something not that, new. And, you know, and I think artists, you know, particularly deal with that because a lot of us are fighting, you know, inner demons and turmoil, you know, so right. I see a lot of artists, you know, deal with that. Let me ask you this. So on a day to day, so let me tell you like really what it was for me because I was starting to get hit harder. I don't know if you dealt with this when you started drinking again, but going from 939 days without drinking right now, mind you, before then I had weight loss surgery, so I had the gastric sleeve. So right. it, it restricted what I could eat, but not what I could drink. Like I couldn't eat a whole hamburger, but I could drink a fifth. Right. So, <laughs> fact, Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would take my calories. So right. <laughs> I was literally, I was literally before I went to rehab, I was drinking a fifth today, which would equate to a regular person without gastric sleeve surgery, drinking right. like two bottles a day, right? So I did that for like two, three years. Like day, I used to, you know, you we we used to we were around each other. Right, time. right, right. I would literally and like I went through every phase of alcohol, like you know, from the vodkas to the tequilas. Like I went through all of those things, like in all of that, you know, succession. But then when it came down to, I just forgot my entire train of thought. <laughs> you were saying like what really did it for you though. Okay, yeah, like okay. you got yeah, so, so like, you know, so I was going through all of that, right? And so then when I finally relapsed, you know, 939 days later, I didn't have the same tolerance. Did you did, did you ever deal with tolerance issues? Like you could weigh less liquor hitting you way harder because you had that, separation did you ever deal with that at all yeah well i think i think the truth of the matter is one i was a shot person i didn't want no mixes i wasn't right. drinking water and that that was like another thing like going out with my friends and stuff like that like even though they saw me getting faded nobody was like hey man drink some water and i damn sure wasn't even thinking about water i just wanted that shot the one of the reasons why i even fell into that alcoholism was because i couldn't feel the liquor so I, I went from doing mixed drinks to going like to seeing a bartender pour this much and all this soda. And I was like, nah, nigga, let me <laughs> let me just get that. I want to see what you're pouring. So, I'm that. yeah, because I'm like, are they making less because they got the Coca-Cola? Like, let uh, me. So I was doing shots because I wanted to feel it right away. Okay. Uh, I was doing four or five shots just like back to back to try to get that. And then eventually I, it was by the time it hit me, it was too late. So I never right. went out trying to get messed up just cause I wanted to be nice. I wanted to right. be nice. I wanted to look like everybody else in the club and, you know, just right. politicking, which, which was another thing for me. It, it was hard for me to socialize 
Mm -hmm. uh, with certain people, some people I could talk to and it's nothing. And then other times I needed a drink to even be around that, which is why if I don't feel right in an event or anything like that, I don't give a fuck who's there for network wise. I walk away because I don't feel good. You know what see, I mean? And it's making me want to drink. Nah, see, and that's just wild that you even say that, like about the shots and stuff. Let me tell you how much of a uh, uh, astute alcoholic that I was. So <laughs> I, astute. okay, I counted out the shots in a fifth. It's 17 shots in a fifth, right? I just knew that. Don't ask me how I know. I just know, right? <laughs> 17 shots. So I remember I would try to, to, to scientifically find where I would be cool and, and not be tripping. So I found normally the sweet spot for me was about eight shots, which was about like a pint. Right. But, but what would always happen is I would, I would get into it like, yeah, a pint. That's all I'm going to drink. That's my limit. I'm cool there. No matter whether it's light, dark. And I was taking shots at the time. I was like on the same stuff as you, like, I was like just chasing stuff with water. Like, okay, right. boom, 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 boom. And so I would do that. But then every single time that I would try that, then I'd be like, all right, well, it's going to be eight shots a night. Right. Let me, just get, let me just get the fifth and I'll, that'll last me two nights. Right, and right. I'd always get to like that eighth shot. I'd be like, all right, one more shot. And then I'd wake up and the bottle be gone. So so that was like, I could never like magically find it. But where did, so what happened to me when I started drinking again last year, I remember the first hangover, I thought I was gonna die. I was just like, I remember laying on, cause I, and I never really used to have hangovers back in the right. day. So then it was just hitting me harder. And then I, you know, I remember somebody told me, well, just drink tequila, it's not a depressant. So I was just, <laughs> I went through like a tequila phase where I was drinking like a fifth of Patron a night and I just wasn't myself, it was just, like back in the day, I'd be able to drink and then get up and do a whole day of work. And then it was right. like, I can't get up till two, three in the daytime. Sometimes I ain't even getting up. And then it just started getting scary to where, like, I want to say like last December, that's when it got like real, really real for me. Like I remember just like drinking and then I'd wake up and I'd be like, I try to drink some water and I'd be throwing up water and I'd be feeling like somebody was just kicking me in my liver the entire night. And I remember one of the times I got really, really drunk and I remember passing out on my floor and I remember waking up cause I got like those, you know, those, those body size mirrors. Mm -hmm. And I remember just looking up and I had threw up on the ground. I remember just looking and like, it was just sweating coming out of me. And I'm like, though, this is going to kill you. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta make a decision now what you're going to do. And really for me, I think for the first time in my life, I had to make the decision for myself to stop because like I, you know, I have a daughter and like, you know what I'm saying? I had been in relationships before, like, you know what I'm saying? And every time I think I tried to put it on another person for me, it just, for whatever reason, it always kept coming back. Like I got to do this for me first so I can be the best version for them. So it's like the same All thing right. you're saying, but just like inverting it a little bit first, like, okay, I got to, cause I don't like waking up like this every morning. I don't like feeling like I'm a hoe and, and the liquor is my pimp. Like right, it, it asked right. me how high to jump. I'm like, okay. I like, it like controls me. Like I remember budgeting money just all to accommodate the liquor. And I was just like, you're not going to make it out of this. So I have to choose myself first. And I think that was the first time where I was just honest about it. And I think what it did for me too, was it answered the question that I think it, it that it is, it, that it will, it will, it will haunt every recovering alcoholic is that question of, can I just do it a little uh, bit? Cause I, I think that's right, what haunted right. me those, all those 939 days. I think as you know, cause once you get to two years, you're like, ah, oh, I got this. You're almost in, right. like how you said, you were putting bottles in your house. Like, and so I think at that point, like I had just gotten into autopilot and I think maybe I just started skipping the steps of how important it was. And I started looking at people like, yeah, I could drink. Like, yeah, just yeah. Doing you I see even, these people. <laughs> I told myself, I was like, I could just do beer and wine. Anyone right. can do beer and wine. Man, I can't do Look, that shit. Here's what's so funny, though. I'm such a uh, true liquor person that I, I don't even mess with beer and wine. So if, if it was beer and wine in the spot, I wouldn't even worry about that. That wouldn't be my, I'm a relapse. Or even if I was drinking, I wouldn't want that. I wanted just the liquor. I think wow. that... Uh, I think what's important, though, is that people don't understand, like I did the AA, I did rehab, I did a lot of things. And for me, what, what worked for me for the last, my, my third time getting myself together, mm -hmm. like I said, I was meditating and I was paying attention 
to what made me the person I am today, okay. meaning my traumas, mm -hmm. my, my happy moments, my, all those things I had to really sit back and look at. And so while I think AA and all those things are really great, mm -hmm. I think that if people are not trying to heal their trauma, mm -hmm. you're always on that borderline. You're always on that borderline because you depend on, you don't, now you don't depend on the liquor, you depend on the people. Right. And so for you, right. if somebody would have answered that night, it could have been a different, it could have been another few days for you. It could have been, mm -hmm. you You could have been stayed sober. You know what I'm saying? But because nobody answered for you, mm -hmm. how do you take care of yourself without depending on anybody? No, that's deep that you say that too, because, you know, when I first got out of, out of rehab this, you know, the second time I, I tried the AA thing and I'm never here to knock anybody for doing AA. Yeah. Whatever keeps you sober, do it. But I realized the reason why it wasn't the perfect fit for me was because I have an addictive personality by nature. And I was starting to see like, uh, you know, people get addicted to other things like energy drinks and cigarettes right. and coffee. Right. And, and I was just like, you know, I, and then plus I just, it, it just wasn't the perfect thing for me. Like I did learn a lot about it. I did the, you know, the whole 12 steps and all that. But as far as like just staying sober, what I found what worked for me was just staying busy every day and just working and like yeah. said, exercising, meditating, like staying away from certain things. But that, that makes me want to ask you this question. <clears throat> How do you stay sober now? So now bring it full surface to April 20, what is it, the 27th, 28th? Um, yeah. today. So how do you stay sober today? Like what's your, like walk me through your day-to-day -day process of what keeps you off the sauce. I, I get up, do a line of cocaine. <laughs> no, <I'm joking>. <laughs> 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 nah, <laughs> nah, um, I, you know, I, I actually smoke still. I think we talked about I do this, too. Yes, yes. I, do. I, I do smoke, um, uh -huh. but I, not necessarily throughout the day, but I do, uh, uh -huh. most of the time at night. Anywho, I, I started to delve into the things that like, you know, working, mm -hmm. um, but, but things that I want to do. So I got productive. Mm -hmm. I started my, uh, company. Um, I started to write, I started to hike. I started to, I started to get out. I, I garden now. I have a whole, Yo. I started, I, I got peppers, carrots, lavender, like, and, and I the want crazy, some of your lavender. I got li to listen, but yo, let me tell you how dope it is. And it can sound really corny, but I, I had a plant Mm -hmm. that I, I, you know, people were saying you can't grow it indoors. It's an outside plant, whatever, whatever. So mm -hmm. I managed to make it grow inside. Wow. <clears throat> now, at a point I left and the plant literally looked like it was dead. So I hit up my friend and I was like, yo, and it was like, don't worry about it. Just do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. My plant went from being like, these are the leaves and they're just hanging down and look like they were going. Mm -hmm. I, I did what they told me to do, woke up the next day and they came back. What? And, and that became wow. one of the, one of the things that soothes me because it's, it was like seeing something die. It was a, it was a, what do you call the word? It, I, I saw myself in the plant that I was gardening wow no let me let me tell you what what helped me because what ended up happening was i, I kind of had everything stripped away from me i felt like god needed to deal with me in so many right. ways like, like <laughs> everywhere that i tried to run every person i tried to run to it was just so i had to finally be stripped of everything and then i was just by myself and like i think it was like around december 10th 11th of last year right Right. The only the all everybody was gone. My my girl was me. We were you know separated at the time. My daughter was gone, and you know I had got we had got two dogs. But then you know my my ex girlfriend at the time, current girlfriend, she took one of the dogs. Me having my dog King here with me, I can absolutely say saved my life and helped get me back to sobriety because the responsibility of just making sure every day at the bare minimum he ate, he got water. He got sunshine, made me eat, get water. Mm -hmm. get I would have stayed in the bed and just right. And he, like dogs really pick up on energy. Like right. he was to the point he would stay in bed with me to the point where I tried to kick him out the bed. Now my dog is not even a barker. He's a whole ass house dog. He's a little Maltese. I tried to kick him out the bed one day. He grabbed me. Rrr. I was like, <laughs> and then he's laid back down like right. I'm here with you. So right. having that. Having a pet, and I've heard little different things about that, like about pets helping. 
with sobriety because they keep you, they give you that accountability. But I also mm-hmm. feel like just like that companionship, like that really helped me. And that was dope. They'll never turn like, their back on you. They never do. And they never judge you. They just, they happy. never judge you. They just love the good parts about you. They just, yeah. Hey, like they don't have anything negative. Yeah. And, and you know what they're also good for mm-hmm. listening. I oh, yeah. would tell my dog <laughs> everything. And he would be looking at me like, nigga, you don't say. I'm like, nigga, these niggas out here is wrong. He'd be like, what? Like, and he would just be looking yeah. at me. So I'm telling you, having, having my dog would help me. And that's dope that you said that you got into uh to gardening because I feel like getting like a, a hobby that has nothing to do with like what pays you or anything, I think that helps you. I've gotten back into music, like yeah. just making music. And I mean, you know, it, unintentionally, my music collides with my career sometimes. So that's like a bonus. But like, I got like even like a little piano here now. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna teach yeah. myself how to play piano. Like, I'm getting back into reading. I'm like reading. Like, side note: if you haven't read this book, The War of Art, I would no, I haven't. highly suggest. I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna check that out. It's a great book. It helps you just kind of take all the gifts in your mind and. So like reading, like I think I think the key to keeping alcoholics dry is keeping them occupied. Like if you just keep them busy, like if I'm busy, if I have something to do, now I don't want to say that, then, do and then that means if there's nothing to do, I'm gonna go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 but because but it helps. It, yeah, it's a tool it, that helps. The the truth of the matter is, don't you've already done the worst in your life almost. Mm. So that fear should be fearless when you come back to reality, because what's going to stop you? You already hit your bottom. You know what I mean? So if I go and hit this stage and I bomb, so the fuck what? Guess what? I'm alive. I can go to another city. I can make it better because I have another day to do that. Mm -hmm. But I I, I highly like when I hear you got to stay busy, you have to know you have to the you have to be able to take care of yourself. Fact. So you you can stay busy, mm-hmm. but let it be something productive that you are happy with. So right. it's it's almost like riding in the car and you your song come on when you heard when you was in 10th grade and that shit make you smile. Mm-hmm. Those are the moments. And that's what I find. I love nature. I love being able to walk around. I love being able to see different things. I love meeting different people if they not too right. talkative or too right. crazy, but, <laughs> but I, I like learning about different people and, and the reading and all those things. So you do stay productive. You do get into these things and understanding that you already did the worst in your life. Ooh. So you should be unstoppable now. Facts. I know. I love that line of thinking because that that's really kind of like how you have to approach it. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then just, it does give you like that boldness to kind of go out there because I am coming back to stand up and like, I'm like, well, what are these people gonna say? I'm like, man, fuck what these Who people are. I've been to hell Cause they're back. already saying it. They're, exactly. they're already saying it. And the minute you change, I went from having friends that was around me. They want, they was popping up in my spot. I took them down to a diner shore with me. And, and then I found out that whole time they was like mad. They didn't, you know, they was talking about me. They was taking pictures. And so I say that to say like, you could see when I was drinking how disinterested they was to even mm. listen to me or have a conversation or more so even hit me up and go, yo, I, I'd rather you come to me and be like, bro, I can't fuck with you right now. It's messing up my energy. Right. I really want you to get help and I hope you will. Rather than you just disappear, it's nothing. But when you start getting your life back together, because the beauty about people like you and me Talk is if me. we tap in to what's special about us, right. we're unstoppable. Facts. And we're, we are here to change a lot, a lot of lives, right. but you have to, that is your job to get in tune with yourself and find that Come when on, that bro. happens, Woo, all them you. people that was around talking Come shit, on. I don't care where, if they're at their highest peak or their lowest, mm-hmm. trust me, it shows and, and, and they can't, they can't fuck with somebody like us. They oh, just no. can't. Oh, we, I'm telling you, like, I feel like I'm one of God's favorites. I believe that uh, about yeah, you absolutely. as well. Like, just because. Too many things have transpired, brought me through too much. And and like and like I'm just understanding that I have a bigger divine purpose. And that's why, like, I was so dope when I hit you up, you know, talking about side note, got a pretty big <laughs> announcement at the end of this episode, but we'll get to that. Hey. In a second. Even when I came to you, you know, about that, because what I feel a responsibility of 
is that like, I love all the things that I've been able to accomplish through the talents that God gave me. I love right. all the people I've been able to touch through laughter, music, you know, people have told me I've inspired their weight loss, all those right. things. And I think that that's great, but I just don't feel right if I don't use this same, the same platform to talk about something that I have been so deeply right. affected by. And I know that alcoholism is something that thrives in shame and people are ashamed of it. Nobody wants to be pegged as that, but I'm like, you know what? If this kind of content helps keep one person sober for one day, I'm job. happy with that. That's bigger than a paycheck for me because it's like I'm using what God gave me to help other people. And I'm not Absolutely. just here to entertain people. I want to ask you one more question before we wrap yep. up and get out of here, because this is something I don't know if you've seen me taking uh, several sips of this Diet Coke. I want to know <laughs> if you deal with this. Now, it's no secret, right, that people gain weight when they get sober, because for obvious reasons, <clears throat> If you're a hardcore, true alcoholic, I'm not saying you gained weight at all. I I'm did. I did. It's happened to me, right? I, that's so, why my tits are down here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a whole different nigga if I sit up straight. <laughs> <laughs> but but also, it's one of those things where I'm saying it's like, every time I get sober, I, you know, I gain weight. And it's really messed up because we're in the public eye. People don't understand. They start making comments about a recovering alcoholic's weight. It's like, nigga, this is literally right. taking me off the sauce. But I wanted to right. ask you, do you deal with different cravings for food and eating fucked up now that you're living a sober life? Because that's my big, I'm back to the snacks, my nigga. Like, <laughs> and you know, I was squabbling with weight. For, uh, right. you, knew, you knew me when I was 470. Right, so right. I'm never trying to go back there, but like now. Your I'm surgery like, needs a surgery you right know now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gotta I get got, another stomach. I, I gotta get a re up. <laughs> I gotta change. Can you update this? Can you, can you update my system? Can you change my flat? Like, listen. So, what do you do about like cravings for like? Because I am a sugar fanatic. Yeah. Sometimes, like, so even though I don't drink, I'm 117 days sober as we speak. Hey. But I would thank you. I would be lying <laughs> to you if I didn't tell you that I go to 7 Eleven three to four times a week, spend $20. Right. Snicker doodles, Skittles. And, I, and my rationale is like, nigga, it ain't You could be drinking, so right. Home. Get out of here. <laughs> they, talk to me. Do you deal with that at all? Like, is that something- They need to put the honey buns by the beer so I don't have to take this shit up. Put the honey <laughs> buns by the beer. Yeah. Put the honey uh, buns by the beer so I don't have to That's, that's my thing, yo. I went heavy with, co uh, with um, uh, coffee. Okay. Uh, I, I'm starting to come down off of that. But what I do is I jump from sugar to sugar. So okay. one one week I'm on uh, honey buns and I'm like, man, I can't do honey buns. Then I go to coffee cakes <laughs> and then I'm on chips. And so I'm, I'm a huge, <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge chocolate fanatic though. So okay. anything chocolate, peanuts, chocolate, coconut, peanut butter, I'm a huge chocolate person. And that's, that's kind of been the biggest thing to me, but that that's the substitute for liquor because it's all sugar. So when you went to rehab, nigga, all they gave you was cookies nigga. and, and, and juice. Niggas, they thought I was the boss because I had money on my books, nigga. I was getting everybody shit out the snack machine. And they and they encouraged it because when you in detox, yeah. like, that's all you doing. So do you even, okay, so let me, I guess the question I'm asking is this, because now I'm in a position to where I'm just like, look, the goal, because I'm not perfect, I'm not perfect at anything. Right. Know that we got to be perfect with alcoholism. Like I know I can't touch alcohol. Like yeah, I can. Right. I can smoke some weed here and there. I can do whatever, but I can't have a sip of beer. None of that shit. So that's the one thing that I have a, a, no margin of error. I just can't right. do it. So I almost rationalize it with myself. Like, look, if I start having that feeling, I don't give a fuck if I drink eight diet cokes. I don't care right. if I drink ten cookies. Is that kind of the approach that you have to kind of? deal with the mania that you might deal with if a potential relapse comes or, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, and like thinking, I, I think that uh, ideally I would want to be sexy one time in my life. Like I, I would want to be able to be the stud. Yeah, you know, you well, I'm saying I want to be the stud that can take off her shirt and just to do this, like get the straight niggas mad, but, but have all the bitches on me. Uh, but um, oh, yo, I, I always look at it like this. I got a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. As you I, are. I'm still having sex. I am. You know what I'm saying? So the minute I need to go look for some vagine <laughs> will be the day where I'm like one and two and three and four. <laughs> but I'm trying. I'm right. trying. But it's I'm right. if I'm if I'm happy and I'm good, I definitely want to lose weight. I definitely want to get healthy. I think that's the next level of step. I'm about to hit 10 months. And I think Congrats. I think thank you, thank you. But I think once we get over this hump, mm -hmm. you can move on to the next one. 
You know what I mean? The first thing is let that liquor go. Let it go. And that's that's my biggest thing. I told myself for all 2021, Hey, right. honey buns, cupcake, whatever. Yeah. Now, mm, now, once I'm about I get to go in, get one now. Once I get out of my year, then maybe we can have a different conversation. But right. Uh, thank you so much. And that leads Absolutely. me to so now that we are wrapping up, um, we have a special uh, announcement. So we might as well go ahead and make it together. So We're my good married. friend Shante, <laughs> I told her before she came onto the show, I had told her, I said, listen, man, um, I got this basically like this podcast that I do. It's called the Dobriety Files, but I do it alone. And um, I think I kind of want to like branch it out. I got my good friend that I met over at Craig Smith's podcast, Charlie Newhart. He's a guy that, you know what I'm saying, has dealt with sobriety and different things. And he's trying to, you know, talk about maybe, you know, doing a sobriety podcast. And so maybe more than just being a guest on a pod, you know, this for me, maybe we start our own podcast with me, you and Charlie. And when I tell you, Shantae, hit me back. Like, I love the idea. Let's do it. So. I'm announcing that we will be having a new podcast coming. It won't live on this station. And it is called One, Two, Three, Tell Them, Shante. Minutes to Sobriety. Minutes right. to Sobriety. Yes, that is. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, wait, yes, is it nobody? Minutes to Sobriety. Um, it will be a podcast that we're dropping once a week on Fridays. We are creating the YouTube and the Facebook for it now. So you guys can check for it. We will be talking about living a sober life. And I think that you guys are going to love it. So please stay tuned for that. You'll be seeing some clips and stuff on this station as well as Shantae station. And then you will see the new station. So you can hear us weekly talk about living a sober well, subscribe. life. Subscribe. Subscribe to all of those things. Subscribe to her page as well. I'm going to put her link to her YouTube here. And thank you so much, Shantae. It does Yo, this is dope. This kind of content isn't it easy. Everybody's this not there to talk about their, their shit, but thank you for being brave and bold like you always have been. And I think that this podcast is going to reach and touch a lot of people. And do Absolutely. This so, is something really dope you're doing. There's a lot of imperfections out there while people are trying to be perfect. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate you putting this platform out and I can't wait to get on this, man. Let's get it. Well, thank you so much for coming and chopping right. up with me. Make sure you guys like the video, share the video, comment, all that stuff, and you will see some more sober content coming from me and my sister. We will see you guys next time. I have been Dope Boy. Hey, Shantae Wins. We'll take you guys next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs>